One of my sons-in-law is a coffee connoisseur who researches coffee science and searches globally for the perfect bean, bought in the perfect way, roasted with the perfect process, in his own home, under perfect conditions, ground just right, to the perfect degree of coarseness, weighed out perfectly, and then he preheats his perfect flask. And I really don't know what I'm talking about, because once he gets to the point of actually brewing this perfect cup of coffee involving scales to measure the weight and and a thermometer to monitor precise temperatures and whatever. <laughs> He's lost me. I mean, what's he, searching for a cure for cancer? So now I question, I mean, what if I were to say to him, I, I know they might be super expensive, but couldn't you just buy a big old coffee machine and <laughs> and dump in some of your perfect beans and press the button just right and and get out coffee that tastes just as good well, i i know he would say something like this even if you could which you can't i wouldn't really be making a cup of coffee now what it wouldn't be my work or my pleasure in the process it would be like i'm plagiarizing a cup of coffee it's not my work it's someone else's work. Hmm. <laughs> so now I'm thinking about artificial intelligence from a whole new kind of troubling angle that we need to talk about in today's episode. Hi, I'm Doug Newton, pastor for 45 years, national award-winning magazine editor and author of 24 books. And this is At the Intersection with Doug Newton, where scripture, culture, and character meet. And I'm here to help you pursue the kind of character needed to align with Scripture faithfully and engage culture graciously. And each week, I make one observation about our culture. And then I give one insight from the Bible that speaks to that issue. And then I suggest one way to strengthen the character that you and I need to relate to our mixed-up world with exemplary grace and fresh impact. This is a no-gripe zone. Our question is not what's wrong with our culture. It's about what's the right way to respond. So, you ready? Here we go. Actually, I love how my son-in-law, Jonathan, enjoys making one cup of coffee. And that's not him on the screen there. It's just somebody doing what he does. Just one cup of coffee at a time with careful attention to detail, all the way from where it's grown and picked, you know, at 7,000 feet above sea level in Guatemala somewhere, over, to when he hands it to his less connoisseurish but very appreciative mother-in-law. I mean, there's something about that that's good about that special care. It, it really becomes his. That makes it his gift. It, it makes it his cup of kindness, fully, generously given. But now, let's take this a step further. I want you to think about those baking contests on TV, you know, that are multiplying like rabbits these days. What if, what if there was a show called Prank the Chefs? where there were four contestants and they're asked to create a birthday cake for a 10-year-old soccer player in some unique way. Now, imagine that three of the contestants are first-class pastry chefs, but one of the contestants is an engineer who has no baking skills but has developed a 3D printer where he uses cake mix and he can pull an incredible design from the internet and convert the picture into a computer-generated model and then print the cake from scratch with cake mix and frosting and all baked and decorated to mechanical perfection without his hands ever touching it. Then, what if the judges, not knowing anything about this, awarded him champion pastry chef? <laughs> and only then is the secret revealed. How would they react? No, not how would they react. Let me ask you, how should they react? Well, hopefully you'll say that it's okay if they liked the cake, but they certainly should take away the engineer's award as the champion pastry chef, right? Because, because he isn't one, right? Well, this is not far off from how we should react to many of the ways that artificial intelligence, now called AI, 
and, and the new open access tools like ChatGPT being used today. I mean, the incomprehensible power of artificial intelligence is the result of current and cutting edge computing technology allowing for vast data collection and processing. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Like for example, processing speed. You may think that your home computer is fast or even your phone and, and, and it is. And you may know that there are things such as supercomputers that are much, much faster than you could even conceive, incredibly faster. But do you realize that they are no longer the kings of speed in the computing world? The new kids on the block are quantum computers. Google has quantum computers. And for example, in comparison, a quantum computer can process in just six seconds, listen, what once took a supercomputer 47 years to compute. Six seconds, what used to take 47 years for a supercomputer. And regarding data collection, scientists working with the currently possible technology are predicting that in not too long, uh, uh, you know, distant future, all of the books ever written will one day be able to be stored on a physical drive the size of a postage stamp. <laughs> I mean, right now, the average smartphone with 128 gigs of storage space can store more than 200,000 books, 500 pages in length. My hard drive storage bay, which is next to my... Um, uh, desk, behind my desk, in a shoebox size, not even a shoebox size, has the ability to store 24 terabytes of space for my current and future videos and podcasts. That box, that little box right there, can store every book in the Library of Congress, 39 million books. Imagine how much information, <laughs> if that little shoebox can store that much, imagine how much information a building the size of one Amazon warehouse could store if it was filled with all of those little boxes. That's what artificial intelligence now is working with. Incomprehensible amounts of data and inconceivable computing speed no wonder AI is proving to be an incredible tool for, for accelerating research and data analysis that will hasten discoveries in, in all sorts of fields, but like the cure and the treatment of diseases, for example. And there's, there's so much more that AI can do for us that will change and improve our world. But until recently, the average person could not access the benefits of AI. However, that's all changed now with OpenAI, tools like ChatGPT. Now, all of that amazing technology is right here at our fingertips, just waiting to be unleashed for, our, for us common folks. I mean, creative power at the speed of thought. But there are pitfalls. I mean, AI is not foolproof. AI makes lots of mistakes still. You, you can't rely on it in many use cases, especially in applications that attempt to simulate human interaction and behavior. But even in that area, uh, I mean, it's, its current simulation accuracy and capabilities are sufficient to fool people. Fake videos are littering the internet and there's even worries that fake videos could even turn the, the presidential election in the fall. Public school students are turning in term papers written by an AI bot. And this is, this is where we approach a boundary line that we should not cross or else we will suffer great harm in the realm of character development. Let me point out at least three character traits that will suffer immense decline. First to go will be integrity. I mean, it's already happening. Littering the internet, our, our Facebook and Instagram posts, shamelessly promoting the use of AI to even write a book for you, you know, design its cover, or do the layout, and have it market ready for you in no time. 
All you have to do is pop in the topic, give a few specifics about yourself or business, pick a style, and it will gather the pertinent information, and voila, out comes a book. Your own book to sell. Your own book? Not. <laughs> I mean, how is that any different than pouring some beans into a coffee machine or a 3D uh, printing cake? How is that any different than copying someone else's paragraph as if you wrote it? That's plagiarism, pure and simple. And anyone who does that, passing off a book or a song or a poem or a graphic design or a research paper or whatever, regardless of the fact that it wasn't actually done by a human, it was done by an AI bot, that lacks integrity. I mean, pretending to be something you are not, pretending you did something you did not do, that lacks integrity. Next, go to resourcefulness. My Blue Jeans definition of resourcefulness, Blue Jean definitions from my character improvement courses, I, I define resourcefulness this way. Resourcefulness is the ability to uh, use what's available to achieve goals and to solve problems. Use what's available to achieve goals and solve problems. Resourcefulness is an undervalued character trait, which happens to be crucial for other traits like perseverance or courage or diligence or even loftier spiritual traits like love. I mean, all of these traits in one way or another require someone who uh, is able to, you know, work out a plan B when plan A doesn't work. And when when they'll work on a plan C when plan B doesn't work, and they'll work on a plan D when plan C doesn't work. I mean, you get the point. You go all the way to plan Z if necessary. That's resourcefulness. A person is more likely to persevere if they can keep coming up with new options to try something else, to try something else. And, you know, if not for resourcefulness, we'd all still be using spinning wheels to make thread or winding the grandfather clock to keep time, right? I mean, virtually everything we currently enjoy in modern life, from health to travel to communication to AI, was made possible by resourceful people. People who aren't resourceful feel stymied all the time. I don't know how to do this. And they're sitting ducks for snake oil solutions or even despotic governments who offer false hopes and spirit-crushing dependencies because they don't know how to do things on their own. AI could mean the demise of integrity. It could mean the demise of resourcefulness. But also... Protecting against the loss of integrity or resourcefulness requires a willingness not to let AI do work for you that you could and should do for yourself. But the temptation will be to take the easy way. Consequently, the final character loss will be a precipitous decline in the trait of industry. The trait of industry is also among the 12 target traits I consider fundamental building blocks of good character. It's that trait that pertains to hard work. I mean, there's a simple principle, you know, about hard work and effort that goes like this. You work harder, you get stronger. You work easier, you get weaker. A few years ago, uh, I had some neck problems and the doctor advised me to use a neck brace with a pump that could, that could airlift and separate the vertebrae in my neck slightly. But he warned, he said, don't leave it on too long, not more than five or 10 minutes, because when your neck muscles aren't used to keeping your head up, they weaken quickly. The same is true of character strength. The less work you do, the less work you can handle. When we become dependent on AI to do the hard work of researching or thinking or calculating or writing, we become less capable of doing that kind of hard work. I mean, AI really then is like an intellectual neck brace we can leave on too long. So admittedly, our world of convenience tools has already seriously minimized much of the hard work that once was required for daily life and made us all less industrious. I mean, we want, really, we've been, we've been conditioned to want every task to be as easy as possible, user-friendly. We, kind of like water, are always seeking the path of least resistance. We've lost contact with the moral virtue of industry. And the words of 
John F. Kennedy Jr. referring to the challenge of landing a man on the moon. I love what he says. Listen to this. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Isn't that amazing? I just love that. We choose to do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard, because of the shaping, strengthening uh, influence and impact on us when we do things that are hard. If we're not careful about what we let AI do for us, we may never get up off the couch, <laughs> having entirely discarded industry for indolence. Like any tool, AI can and will bring incredible, perhaps even unimaginable benefits, but the unintended consequences and collateral damage may take away more than it gives. So, even as AI inspires great expectations, we must foster a concurrent enthusiasm for great character. So, where do we start? Well, there's a spirit that I find really instructive and, and so inspirational in Scripture. You know, throughout the Bible, there are little snippets from stories that give us big insights into the way people of good character think and act. Well, one time, King David of Israel, the greatest of all their kings, made a, made a sinful mistake that resulted in a fast-spreading disease taking the lives of thousands of people. And so he appealed to God's mercy for an end to the punishment. And God's response came through the prophet Gad, who told David to build an altar to the Lord on a threshing floor in a particular region where the disease was still spreading. And so David went there to do that. And a man named Arona, the owner of the property, met the king there. And in perfect uh, you know, servant humility, you know, a subject of the king, he bowed before the king and he offered his king immediate ownership of his property and even the animals for sacrifice, all free of charge. But... David would not hear of it. He could have, as king, he could have just taken it and used it. But he made this brief statement that I think says it all. He said, far be it from me to give the Lord a sacrifice that cost me nothing. He could have had someone else do all the work for him, pay the price, but it wouldn't have been his sacrifice. It would have been a plagiarized sacrifice, an AI sacrifice, quick and easy, no integrity, no resourcefulness, no industry, no character. That same spirit is the only thing that will keep AI from spreading harm, even as it spreads hope and help. You and I must, be, must always insist on being people who are willing to put out our own effort, who realize that sweat makes achievements sweet, who embrace the necessary pain for every gain. I mean, help helps, but too much help hurts. You know, recently, Zoom, the leading provider of online group meetings, rolled out some new capabilities. Thanks to AI, people who are late to meetings or maybe they get distracted for a chunk of the meeting or maybe don't even show up are going to get summaries of the meetings, not just transcripts, but just summaries. It's already going to be clipped for you so that it marks and it delivers the video segments that just relate to you. It will know what it was you needed to hear from that hour-long meeting. Bring it all down to like five minutes. After all, why waste your time watching the whole thing on Zoom? An AI companion, as they call it, will even draft replies from you <laughs> in response to the things on the meeting that fit the context of what you needed to know and, quote, cut down on the time spent composing messages. <laughs> in short, 
you're going to be able to get anything you really need without even paying attention to or showing up. You might as well just call it how to fool people with zero effort. Let's not call it Zoom. Let's call it zero. Adios, integrity. Sayonara, industry. Thank you, AI. We all need to brace ourselves and take preemptive action. So I've prepared another crosswalk for you, specifically focused on the best place to start working on learning to work harder. Isn't that kind of odd? <laughs> you need to work at working harder, learning to work harder, being more industrious. You know, in my character training course on industry, I define industry this way. It's working as hard as necessary to finish a task and then looking for more to do. That's what an industrious person does. And you can't fake that, right? Because here's the fact. Industrious people eventually are the ones who always rise to the top like cream. And in the long run, Industry pays off more than AI. You work on becoming an industrious person and you will likely be more resourceful, have more integrity all the way along and become, as a result, a much more valued person in, in all of the spheres of your life. I have a friend who has a business, but it's more of a mission than it is a business. She doesn't even know I have this up on screen. She lives way over in California somewhere. But she has this mission um, to encourage people. It's, well, it's a passion of hers to encourage people to start writing handwritten notes and sending them through the snail mail. I mean, you know, it's one of those long ago things people did that takes extra effort. And it's been dropped along the wayside in favor of the quick and easy email or text or Facebook birthday wish or Hallmark GIF with embedded music. And those may be nice insofar as they're actually, you know, letting people know that you're thinking of them, you're giving them a birthday wish. But sending a handwritten note or card in the mail is just the kind of thing that you can do to actually strengthen your own trait of industry and gratitude at the same time. It's just a much more beautiful thing to do. So I just love what Lisa Bogart is doing and the work that she, uh, the mission that she's on. And by the way, that's one of the exercises in the crosswalk this, uh, this week is to actually send a, a handwritten message to somebody. Well, that's it for this week. I'm so glad that you were here, and I hope you agree that this is important stuff. If you appreciate what I'm trying to do in this podcast, I really hope you'll share it with your friends and subscribe to my Fresh, Fresh Impact YouTube tra channel. It really does help. And like always, in 24 hours, I'll have a permanent version on YouTube and an audio-only version for those of you who know somebody who might want to listen on the go. And all that information about the podcast and the and, of, and now and in the future can be found on our website. The links are at the end of this video. Thanks again for tuning in. If you do think this podcast is a valuable resource and you hope it will continue, uh, would you leave me a comment, send me an email, or a handwritten note. <laughs> How about that? Well, again, I hope you'll join me next week at the intersection with Doug Newton. And I'm already looking forward to addressing this hot button issue of nationalism. What, what is it about this ism that's causing such schism today? Can't wait for that. And in the meantime, remember, it's up to you to use the benefits but outsmart the detriments of artificial intelligence. See you next time.